2017 to 18, so through to the end of June 2018. Um, and as I said, it takes into account the entire city from, from Hyde to uh, Berwick to Waikawaiti and everything in between. And over that year, we've seen uh, about a 1.5% population increase, uh, quite unprecedented for, for Dunedin, a 2.6% GDP increase, not as much as much of the rest of New Zealand, but still significant, a 5% increase in energy use overall, and a 1% greenhouse gas um, increase. So overall, our energy consumption is 12.24 petajoules, and as you can see, we've clustered it there into liquid fuels on the left, um, electricity, biomass, coal, and sulfur. I'm going to go quickly through each of those um, groups and discuss a little bit about what our, our high-level findings were that you might be, find interesting. There's a huge amount more which I could talk about. So diesel and petrol, um, the fuels we use for transport, are, are the biggies. 50% uh, of our energy used in the city is for uh, transport, diesel and, and, and petrol. Very, very little of this is used for other purposes. And together, those contribute 75% of the city's energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. So that is a big problem area for the city, and one I know the City Council is working hard to address through improving things like active transport and public transport, but it's something that all of us, individuals and, and businesses, have to address, and, and it's getting worse. So we're using more um, transport fuels, and that's one of the areas where we're seeing quite a considerable rise. The, 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 the unevenness of, of the profile, we believe, is because this is measured through tanker deliveries to Dunedin City, so it's net, month by month it varies quite a bit. The good news story is, is electric vehicle uptake. So this is EVs and, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles um, has been really increasing since around 2005, 2000, sorry, 2015 and 16, and is going up currently at an exponential rate, which is nice to see. Um, Dunedin City itself, like the urban area, has the greatest uptake, but Mosgiel and Waitaki are, are signally in there as well. 11% um, of those are company owned and the rest are owned by, by individuals or, or families. The rather interesting thing that we only worked out yesterday is that in fact uh, Dunedin is, is remarkable and of the four main cities we've got the highest level of, of uptake and it appears like we might have um, the highest level of uptake um, across New Zealand as a whole. We haven't quite done all those uh, calculations. And if so, that's a really good news story and something that we need to make a big deal about. So we just need a little bit more checking of that data. But that is a drop in the bucket um, so far um, in relation to the number of cars we have, for example. You can see <laughs> that we've got a very, very long way to go before it starts making a dent in those greenhouse gas emissions. So please, every one of you who's thinking of buying your next car, you know what it's going to be, don't you? An EV. Um, electricity. Um, so electricity consumption is about 22-23% of our energy as a whole, about 14 uh, petajoules, um, and about 9% of the city's energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. Where we get it from is interesting. So about 81% of the electricity we use is from the national grid, and 19% is what we call locally embedded generation. So when we uh, look at that, the national grid electricity is, was last year about 82% renewable, and the locally Im embedded generation is pretty much 100% renewable, apart from a few generators and a few businesses. When you look at that in more detail, um, we can count, amazingly, Mahinarangi as well as Waipuri and Deep Stream. Now, this, these are not within the city boundaries, but the, uh, the power is injected into the city uh, within the city boundaries, and so we allow ourselves to, to, to count these because it actually flows directly into Dunedin. That tiny sliver, that little brown sliver uh, between Mahinarangi and Waipori is, is, the, uh, is the cool stuff, so that's the solar and the small wind and the biomass and so forth. Um, and that's the area where we're seeing growth at the moment, um, and particularly in solar. Um, Small-scale wind is, is pretty level, despite the attempts of, of many people in this room <laughs> to, to grow it. Um, but, but solar is, is the good news story um, for Dunedin. Um, but again, it's a very microscopic contribution to our electricity generation, and it was so, so microscopic that it didn't even show up when I, when I graphed it. So there you go. So a long way to go there as well, but it does show that solar does have potential and it is growing in the city. And in fact, as an aside, our research centre is about to have solar panels plastered all over its roof. 
watch this space. Um, biomass, so that's interesting stuff. That's firewood, wood chips, wood pellets, and interestingly, oat husks. Um, Haraways burn a lot of the oat husks for, for energy. Um, a good bulk of our energy as a city comes from biomass, um, and it only uh, contributes a very small proportion, 1% or so, to the city's uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and we've got lots and lots of wood fuels. We've got a great resource out there that we could use a whole lot better. So about 60% of our biomass is used for residential and 40% for commercial use. So wood chips, wood pellets, um, most of the firewood is for residential use and, and those oat husks. The wood pellets, interestingly, have grown about 10% in the last year. So there's a huge potential there for, for actually growing our production of wood pellets locally. At the moment, almost, almost all of those wood pellets are imported from the North Island. Um, there is an idea about potentially producing them in Southland, but there's a, a reason why we should start thinking about it here as well. So this is a great area to try and grow for the city. Um, we've got the, the, the potential, we've got the biomass, we just need to start using it better. And finally, coal. Um, that's a relatively small uh, proportion of our total consumption of energy, but it's producing about 9% of the city's greenhouse gas emissions. So that's a, a, a serious area that we need to start looking at. And when we look at coal use, almost all of it is in organisations. A very small portion is still used by households. And when you start breaking down the organisational consumption, um, that comes from 39 boilers in schools, um, eight boilers in other businesses, and the university hospital, and what used to be the, the, the Cadbury um, district heating scheme. The only bit of good news there is that there's been about a 1.5 reduction in coal use over the last financial year, and that's largely because um, they've been the, the university hospital district heating scheme has been using less coal. So, as a total, our energy emissions uh, generate about 648 kilotons of, of carbon dioxide equivalent. Um, so, we've got a long way to go to get to where Bob was pointing us to net carbon zero by. 2048 or 2050, um, and to get there we need to decrease those emissions by about 3.3% per annum, at the moment going up slightly. So where can we act to make a difference? And these are the key areas that I've identified and they're pretty bog standard, but very obviously transport is the big one. Um, so active transport, public transport, electric vehicles, lime scooters, anything you can put your feet on or sit on or use actively to get away from using your cars. Um, it's healthier, it's fun, it's cost effective and it has lower greenhouse gas emissions. Why not do it? Um, and I know that the City Council is putting a lot of effort into trying to improve infrastructure to assist us to move in that direction. Heating is another big area, um, moving away from coal and moving away from inefficient heating sources and into using lots of biomass and uh, electricity. There's many reasons why burning wood fuels is a good idea, um, including reducing peaks in the, the electricity grid, which means we don't have to have so much generation. There's a complicated story around that, but basically burning, burning wood, firewood, to keep warm in efficient um, heating systems is a really, really good idea for you and a good idea for New Zealand. And of course, insulating your homes. Together, those are healthier, more efficient, and lower greenhouse gas emissions. And finally, increasing the amount of local renewable generation we, we, we undertake. Um, there's already a reasonable amount. We can grow it a great deal more and make more use of local forests, make more use of the sun we get and the wind we get, and producing local jobs. These things are becoming increasingly cost effective, including wind and solar. and lower our greenhouse gas emissions. So that's my story. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now I'm going to move on to Austin and she's going to be talking about what you can do personally and she's also got two students um, who are going to assist her with that. Thank you very much. For <laughs> that excellent cross-section of our Dunedin City's contribution to the various greenhouse gases. Uh, will give you hopefully food for thought and uh, basis for some questions when question and answer time comes along.